Hello all, welcome to this video on matrix decompositions. Today I'll be talking about practical interpretation of SVD using an example and matrix approximation. First let us look into the practical interpretation of SVD by analyzing data on people and their preferred movies. Consider three viewers Ali, Beatrix and Chandra rating four different movies Star Wars, Blade Runner, Emily and Delicatessen. Their ratings are values between 0 which is the worst and 5 which is the best and encoded in a data matrix A of dimension 4 by 3. Each row represents a movie and each column a user. This is the given matrix. The column vectors of movie ratings, one for each viewer, are x Ali, x Beatrix and x Chandra. Factoring A using SVD offers a way to capture the relationships of how people rate movies and especially if there is a structure linking which people like which movies. After applying SVD on A, we got the components U, Sigma and V transpose. Applying SVD to our data matrix A makes a number of assumptions like all viewers rate movies consistently using the same linear mapping, there are no errors or noise in the ratings, and we interpret the left singular vectors ui as stereotypical movies and the right singular vectors vj as stereotypical viewers. We then make the assumption that any viewer's specific movie preferences can be expressed as a linear combination of vj. Similarly, any movie's likability can be expressed as a linear combination of ui. Therefore, a vector in the domain of svd can be interpreted as a viewer in the space of stereotypical viewers and a vector in the codomain of SVD correspondingly as a movie in the space of stereotypical movies. Let us inspect the SVD of our movie user matrix. The first left singular vector UI has large absolute values for the two science fiction movies and a large first singular value which is given in red. Thus this groups a type of users with a specific set of movies that is the science fiction theme. Similarly, the first right singular V1 shows large absolute values for Ali and Beatrix who give high ratings to science fiction movies which is shown in green. This suggests that V1 reflects the notion of a science fiction lover. Similarly, U2 seems to capture a French art house film theme and V2 indicates that Chandra is a close to an idealized lover of such movies. An idealized science fiction lover is a purist and only loves science fiction movies. So, a science fiction lover V1 gives a rating of 0 to everything else other than the science fiction movies. This logic is implied in the diagonal substructure for the singular value matrix sigma. A specific movie is therefore represented by how it decomposes linearly into its stereotypical movies. Likewise, a person would be represented by how they decompose via linear combination into movie themes. SVD is used in a variety of applications in machine learning from least squares problem in curve fitting to solving systems of linear equations. These applications harness various important properties of SVD its relation to the rank of a matrix and its ability to approximate matrices of a given rank with lower rank matrices. Substituting a matrix with its SVD has often the advantage of making calculation more robust to numerical rounding errors. SVD's ability to approximate matrices with simpler matrices in a principled manner opens up machine learning applications ranging from dimensionality reduction and topic modeling to data compression and clustering. Now let us look into matrix approximation. We considered the SVD as a way to factorize A as U sigma V transpose which belongs to the M cross N dimension space into a product of three matrices where U belongs to M cross M space, V belongs to N cross N space, they are orthogonal and sigma contains singular values on its main diagonal. Instead of doing the full SVD factorization, we will now see how the SVD allows us to represent a matrix A as sum of simpler low rank matrices AI which lends itself to a matrix approximation scheme that is cheaper to compute than the full SVD. 
we construct a rank 1 matrix AI which belongs to the M cross N dimension space as AI is given by UI BI transpose which is formed by the outer product of the ith orthogonal column vector of U and V. These six images are used for image processing with SVD. We have the original image which is a grayscale image that is 1432 by 1910 metrics of values between 0 and 1. All these are rank 1 matrices A1 to A5 and their corresponding singular values sigma 1 to sigma 5. The grid-like structure of each rank 1 matrix is imposed by the outer product of the left and the right singular vectors. A matrix A belonging to M cross N dimension space of rank R can be written as the sum of rank 1 matrices AI so that A is given by sigma i is equal to 1 to R sigma i ui vi transpose which can be written as sigma i is equal to 1 to R sigma i ai where the outer product matrices ai are weighted by the ith singular value sigma i. The diagonal structure of the singular value matrix sigma multiplies only matching left and right singular vectors ui vi transpose and scales them by the corresponding singular value sigma i. All the terms sigma ij ui vj transpose vanish for i not equal to 0 because sigma is a diagonal matrix. Any terms where i greater than r vanish because corresponding singular values are 0. Now, if the sum that we get does not run over all the matrices ai where i varies from 1 to r but only up to an intermediate value k which is less than r then we obtain a rank k approximation given by a cap of k which can be written as sigma i is equal to 1 to k sigma i v i transpose u i which can be written as sigma i is equal to 1 to k sigma i a i of a where rank of a cap of k is k. Now we will see another collection of 6 images that is used for image reconstruction with SVD. We have the original image here and all the other images have been reconstructed using the low rank approximation of SVD which is the rank K approximation. We will see that the shape of the rocks become increasingly visible and clearly recognizable in the rank 5 approximation. While the original image requires 1432 into 1910 which is 27 lakhs 35,120 numbers, the rank 5 approximation requires only to store the 5 singular values and the 5 left and right singular vectors which is 1432 and 1910 dimensional each for a total of 5 into 1432 plus 1910 plus 1 which is 16,715 numbers just above 0.6% of the original. To measure the difference or error between A and its rank K approximation A cap of K we need to know the notion of a norm. Now we will see the spectral norm of a matrix. For x belonging to the n dimension space other than zero vector spectral norm of a matrix a belonging to m cross n dimension space is defined as Euclidean norm of A given by maximum of x Euclidean norm of Ax by Euclidean norm of x. The spectral norm of A is its largest singular value given by sigma 1. Then we look into a cart young theorem. Consider a matrix A element of m cross n dimension space of rank R and a matrix B belonging to the same space with a rank K. For any K less than or equal to R with A cap of K given by sigma i is equal to 1 to K sigma i u i v i transpose, it holds that A cap of K can be given by the minimum of A minus B Euclidean norm where rank of B is less than or equal to K and the Euclidean norm of A minus A cap of K is sigma K plus 1. 
The Eckhart Young theorem states explicitly how much error we introduce by approximating A using a rank K approximation. We can interpret the rank K approximation obtained with the SVD as a projection of the full rank matrix A onto a lower dimensional space of rank at most K matrices. Of all the possible projections, SVD minimizes the error between A and any rank K approximation. We observe that the difference between A minus A cap of K is a matrix containing the sum of the remaining rank 1 matrices given by A minus A cap of K is equal to sigma i equal to K plus 1 to R sigma i ui vi transpose. We immediately obtain sigma k plus 1 as the spectral norm of the difference matrix. Now if we assume that there is another matrix B with rank of B less than or equal to k such that Euclidean norm of A minus B is less than Euclidean norm of A minus A cap of k, then there exist at least n minus k dimensional null space which is Z, which is a subset of the n dimension space such that x belongs to Z implies that bx equal to 0. Then it follows that Euclidean norm of Ax is given by Euclidean norm of A minus B into x. And by using a version of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality that is based on norms of matrices, we see that Euclidean norm of Ax is less than or equal to Euclidean norm of A minus B into Euclidean norm of x, which is less than sigma k plus 1 into Euclidean norm of x. However, there exists a k plus 1 dimensional subspace where Euclidean norm of Ax is greater than or equal to sigma k plus 1 into Euclidean norm of x, which is spanned by the right singular vectors Vj, where j is less than or equal to k plus 1 of A. Adding up the dimensions of these two spaces yield a number greater than n, as there must be a non zero vector in both spaces. This is a contradiction to the rank nullity theorem. The Eckhart-Young theorem implies that we can use SVD to reduce a rank R matrix A to a rank K matrix A cap in a principled optimal manner. We can interpret the approximation of A by a rank K matrix as a form of lossy compression. Therefore, the long rank approximation of a matrix appears in many machine learning applications. Example, image processing, noise filtering, and regularization of ill-posed problems. Furthermore, it plays a key role in dimensionality reduction and principal component analysis. Now, going back to our movie rating example, we can now apply the concept of lower rank approximation to approximate the original data matrix. Recall that our first singular value captures the notion of science fiction theme in movies and science fiction lovers. Thus, by using only the first singular value term in a rank 1 decomposition of the movie rating matrix, we obtain the predicted ratings. That is A1 is given by U1, V1 transpose. This is U1. And we have the first singular value multiplied to it. We get this resultant matrix. And this first rank 1 approximation A1 is insightful because it tells us that Ali and Beatrix likes science fiction movies such as Star Wars and Blade Runner because their values are greater than 4 but fails to capture the ratings of other movies by Chandra. It's not surprising as Chandra's type of movies is not captured by the first singular value. The second singular value gives us a better rank 1 approximation of those movie theme lovers. So A2 is given by U2, V2 transpose. This is U2. This is the second singular value. We get this resultant matrix. In the second rank 1 approximation A2, we capture Chandra's ratings and movie types well, but not the science fiction lovers. This leads us to consider the rank 2 approximation, that is A cap of 2, where we combine the first two rank 1 approximations, which is A cap of 2 given by sigma 1 A1 plus sigma 2 A2 which will give us this matrix and we see that this is similar to the original movie ratings table we saw in the example first. This suggests that we can ignore the combination or the contribution of A3. We can interpret this so that in the data table there is no evidence of a third movie theme or movie lovers category. 
This also means that the entire space of movie themes or movie lovers in our example is a two-dimensional space spanned by science fiction and French art house movies and lovers. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.